Hey guys, it's Amber. Um, there's a couple things I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Um, bipolar disorder. I suffer from it. Um, and I have for a really long time. Um, it pretty much, it runs in my family. Um, and it's, it is genetic. Uh, my dad was bipolar. Um, my grandpa on my mom's side, my aunt, um, another one of my aunts, uh, my sister is bipolar ADHD, um, so it's nothing that I'm not used to dealing with, and I've dealt with people that were bipolar my whole life, um, I pretty much self-diagnosed myself when I was, um, I don't know, like 15, 16, right around there, um, I just was never treated for it and recently I did go to the psychologist as everybody knows and I went to the psychiatrist and I was officially diagnosed bipolar um, so there's just I just wanted to um, kind of give everybody a general idea of what bipolar is and um, how it affects me it doesn't affect everybody the same the general idea does, but I'm just going to kind of give you some insights on how it affects me um, personally. Um, I used to call it my funk. When I would have my episodes um, of manic and depressive, I would be in what I would call my funk. Um, and I still kind of call it that, but it's more... Lately I've been calling it my bipolar, I guess because now it has an official name. Um, it is a brain disorder that causes extreme moods, um, extreme mood swings. Um, it's like you have no control of your body. Oh, uh, let's see. You can't, you can't change your moods, um, just like everybody else. It's way more severe moods. Um, like normal people are like here. Uh, bipolar, the manic can go up here, and then the depressive way down here, and back up and back down, and back up and back down, um, very frequently. I usually, um, have my episodes three to four times a year, all depending on what's going on in my life, um, you know, situational circumstances, make it a little bit different. Um, only 1% of the population suffers from bipolar disorder, and that, I, it's kind of funny to me, I figured it'd be a whole lot more, but, um, I guess with everybody in my family that's bipolar, I just assumed that more people in the world would be diagnosed bipolar. Um, now one of the phases of bipolar, uh, it's the manic phase and that's where the highs come in um, you feel like you're on top of the world you feel like you're on cloud nine um, like on a scale from one to ten you feel like you're at fifty um, you there's certain things that happen um, that you do um, when you're in the manic stage. Uh, one can be spending money, getting yourself into debt, um, being promiscuous, um, and having insomnia or a want to not sleep. Um, and I have all of them sometimes. Sometimes I only have one, one or so. <coughs> um, and when I'm in my highs, in my manic phase, I feel awesome. I feel like I'm on top of the world. Um, nobody can bring me down. Nobody can, nobody can piss me off because I don't care. Um, it's almost, it's almost a cocky feeling, but it's almost like the high is so great. It's almost like a cocaine high. Um, nothing can bring me down <clears throat> and 
my mood stays like that for a while. Sometimes it's a day, sometimes it's a couple days or a week. Um, I really don't think it's ever been more than a week, week and a half for me. And um, then after that, <laughs> um, sometimes I'll have like a normal day or two in between the manic and depressive phase. And then after the normal couple days, I go into my depressive stage where I'm really low um, and I hate everybody and everything. Um, I can't, I can't bring myself out of it. I feel absolutely awful. Um, I sleep all day long. The only reason I get out of bed in the morning is to go to work. I go to work, I come home, I get back in the bed. And so I'm in the bed <clears throat> sometimes 18 hours a day. And that's a really long time. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I, in my depressive low stage, I feel like I'm at a negative 50. Like the highs, a scale of 1 to 10, it's like a 50, positive 50. My lows, scale of 1 to 10, it's like a negative 50. So, I mean, it's completely extreme, you know, one end to the other. Um, during the depressive phase, I am not very nice. I'm a bitch. And I don't care. Um, you end up pretty much shutting everybody out. Um or you hurt the ones that you care about the most. Uh, you feel like you want to crawl into a hole and <clears throat> when I when you hit that depressive stage and you want to sleep all day it's called hypersomnia. Not insomnia like the manic stage, it's hypersomnia and that's you know sleeping all the time. Um, and like I said with the highs, I feel like I'm on cocaine, I'm on a cocaine high. In my lows, I feel like I'm coming down from cocaine. Um, and the only reason I use that as an example is because that is the only way I know how to describe it. Um, I have done it a few times way back in the day, and that's what I remember. That is how, that's how I feel. Um, that is how my highs and my lows go, and I don't even have to do a drug to, to feel it. <laughs> Not that that's a good thing or a bad thing, but, um, that's just kind of how it happens, how it makes me feel, and, um, you know, how, how my bipolar is. Um, I do have normal days in between. Um, actually quite a few normal days I have in between. I really only go through my funk or my bipolar episode, um, three to four times a year. I actually just came out of one, um, over this past weekend. It went for, let me see, almost a week. It started last Sunday and it ended, well, it ended this past Sunday and just as I explained I hated everybody I hated everything what happened was um, I did a toxin cleanse like a system cleanse to get the toxins out of my body to get like a jump start on my weight loss and um, apparently it flushed all of my meds out of my system um, it was pretty much starting over, completely unmedicated, completely sober, um, you know, no drinking, no, no smoking, no nothing. Um, my antidepressant wasn't in my system, my mood stabilizer wasn't in my system, and I, it was the lowest low that I've had in probably three years. Um, it was really bad. And it was almost like my body didn't know how to function without being on some kind of medication or, you know, drug or, um, 
some kind of alcohol or anything. I haven't been, I haven't done anything in the longest time, <clears throat> but I've been on my antidepressant and I just got put on my mood stabilizer. Um, I think I'm on week three now, but when that wiped my system clean, I had to start all over. It was the worst depressive episode. It might have been the worst one of all time. It was pretty bad. Um, now what I'm on is my antidepressant is Celexa and I'm on 40 milligrams of that a day. Um, in addition, my mood stabilizer is Lamictal. Now with that, um, the first week you're on 25 milligrams. Then you jump up for the next two weeks to 50 milligrams and then you get to the top 100 milligrams um, and kind of even out on that. Um, now the Lamictal, it doesn't fix the moods, it doesn't fix the mood swings, but it makes more time in between the episodes. So um, it'll be longer in between my manic and depressive episodes, hopefully. Um, I can tell a difference though. My mood is better. Um, I feel like I can do more things as far as getting outside. Um, I took my daughter out last weekend and we played ball outside for probably 45 minutes. <clears throat> I'm not an outside person. I, for the most part, would rather stay inside all by myself, locked up in my house, doing nothing, just cleaning or, you know, watching TV or whatever. Um, I'm not very social when I'm like that, when I'm in a normal to depressive state. I'm not social at all. And, you know, people around me notice that these things are changing, um, that my lamictal really is working. My mom yesterday had said it. She said, you know, I can tell that the lamictal is doing you good because <clears throat> you're actually outside. You know, you're, you're playing with Aaliyah, my daughter. You know, I'm playing with her more. And, you know, I just, I just feel like doing more things. Um, now this kind of coincides with my <clears throat> weight loss surgery in the way that, um, when I'm in my manic moods and I'm feeling, you know, on top of the world, I feel great, that's when I tend to stick to my diet. Um, I stick to my exercise, which um, I get on the treadmill uh, pretty much for the most part. Um, I'm really not doing too much else. Um, as of right now because I'm really having problems with my knees, but I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but in my manic episodes, when I'm really, really high, I stick with my diet and I care about, you know, being healthier and having my surgery and, you know, being, being able to do things with my daughter that I can't do right now, that I can't do until you know, I lose some weight and my knees stop hurting and, you know, I can fit into, like, the slide. We go to the park and there's this huge slide and my daughter always wants me to go up there with her. And I don't go up there because I don't think I will fit through the bars to get to the slide. Um, so that's kind of one of the non-scale victories I'm kind of waiting for. Because, you know, I want to do those type of things. I want to be able to play with her and take her to the park and run around everywhere and, you know, be able to do that. Um, now, when I'm in my depressive state, I do not give a damn about my diet. Um, I don't care. I completely blow my diet. I eat whatever I want to eat, whenever I want to eat it. Um, and it's like I don't care. I don't care about anything. I don't care if I stay fat. I don't care if I get skinny. I just don't care. Um, and through these episodes, like, 
when I hit my manic 